Hello there, welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. This is a series of lessons uh, looking at making a transition from GCSE level up to A-level chemistry. So if you're going to study A-level chemistry, this is an excellent start. Uh, make sure you do like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on all the future content. Use the comments features if you have any questions. So this is then a final lesson, lesson four in a series of four, looking at the transition from GCSE up to A-level. And this lesson is going to focus mostly on maths and mole calculations and the use of Avogadro's constant. So we're going to look, first of all, at what definitions for mole and Avogadro's constant actually are. We're then going to carry out some calculations for moles and some calculations for numbers of particles and also any associated calculations from rearrangements. So starting off with some definitions then. The mole, it often comes with a bit of confusion from GCSE. Ultimately, the mole is just a number. It's a way of measuring things. Okay. Now, a definition though, it's one mole of a substance contains the same number of particles as there are atoms in 12 grams of carbon 12. So it's just a number. And that number is in fact Avogadro's number, that is the number of particles. And it is a very, very large number, as you would imagine. So Avogadro's constant is often given the notation Na, sometimes L, and it is a very, very large number. Now you do not need to memorize this number, you are supplied with it in questions. But it's a very, very big number, as you would imagine. If you had 12 grams of carbon and you could actually count the number of atoms, you would have quite a lot. And that's how many you would have. Now, you've probably seen this mole calculation triangle before, but just to talk you through how we use this triangle and what it is. So ultimately, N stands for moles and moles is equal to the mass in grams divided by the relative mass or the molecular mass. So this is in grams. We work this out using the formula mass or the relative mass of the uh, molecular formula or the ionic formula. And we've practiced doing that in previous videos. And N is your number of moles. So what I suggest you do now is you're going to attempt to work through these questions. You will need access to a periodic table. Make sure that, that periodic table goes to one decimal place and you're going to use the formula triangle from the pre previous slide, and you're gonna work through this series of questions here. And when you're ready to see the answers, unpause the video. Here are the answers then. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the first one. I'm also going to go through the fourth one, and I'm going to go through the first mass calculation as well, just to explain how we've done it. So for the first three, we just need access to the periodic table and make sure your periodic table is one decimal place, as I specified before. So the first one, formula mass of water. Now water is H2O, which is two hydrogens and one oxygen. If we look at the periodic table, the atomic mass of hydrogen is 1.0 and the atomic mass of oxygen is 16.0. We add those together. And that adds up to 18. Notice the units here. I have given units for the relative mass because it's grams per mole. Often you may see units emitted here and that is okay, but I'm, I'm putting units here as grams per mole. Okay, so now working out the number of moles in 120 grams of carbon. So what we need to do here is we do need to use the formula triangle. In this case, we've been asked to calculate moles. So moles is equal to the mass in grams divided by the relative mass. The mass in grams, we are told, is 120. Now carbon, now we need to use a periodic table, and the atomic mass of carbon is 12. 120 divided by 12 is equal to 10. Moving on to the mass of 0.2 moles of helium. So I'm using the same formula triangle. But this time I need to rearrange it. Mass is equal to moles multiplied by relative mass. My moles here is 0 0.2. My relative mass of helium is 4. 
0.2 times by 4 is 0.8 and units are essential here because it's mass the units are in grams let's move on to the next stage then so now we're going to look at how we can actually use Avogadro's number now you are given Avogadro's number in any question when you require it and it is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 a very large number as expected now if we know the number of moles which is n we can multiply the number of moles by Avogadro's constant to tell us the number of particles that are present now the best thing for us to do would be to look at a couple of examples first off we can also rearrange this if we need to so for example if we have the number of particles and we want to find the number of moles then number of particles divided by Avogadro's constant would be equal to the number of moles so we can rearrange this triangle as well should we need to okay so here are three questions then I suggest you have a go yourself and when you're ready we can unpause and I'm going to talk through these three examples okay so we've been asked how many gold atoms so to find the number of atoms we're going to need to do moles multiplied by Avogadro's constant now we know Avogadro's constant is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 I don't quite know the number of moles yet though because it's 25 grams so I am going to have to do one initial calculation for the moles the moles is going to be the mass divided by the relative mass of gold which look upon the periodic table is 197 so my first calculation is 25 divided by 197 take my calculator is equal to 0.127 then I'm going to times that by Avogadro's constant and my answer is 7.64 times 10 to the 22 atoms so in quite a quick simple calculation I can calculate the number of atoms of gold in a 25 gram sample it's quite impressive well I think so anyway right how many moles so this time we want the moles in that many molecules so I'm going to rearrange my equation moles is going to be particles divided by Avogadro's constant the particles in question here are the molecules of O2 so I'm going to go 2.07 times 10 to the 24 divided by Avogadro's constant and what do I get pop them in my calculator 2.07 times 10 to the 24 divided by 6.0 2 times 10 to the 23 is equal to 3.44 and again moles does not have a unit it's just a value it's just a number finally a little bit trickier this one 15 grams of magnesium chloride so my first step is to work out the number of moles which is mass divided by the MR the MR is 24 plus 35.5 plus 35.5 which is equal to 95 so 95.3 in fact magnesium is 24.3 now people may make the mistake here of assuming magnesium chloride is MgCl now if you followed my previous videos on transitions where we worked on formulae magnesium chloride is MgCl2 and you are expected to know that therefore the MR 95.3 so 15 divided by 95.3 is equal to 0.1574 so now I'm going to find the number of magnesium chlorides by times in that by Avogadro's constant that's going to tell me how many magnesium chlorides I've got so times by 6.022 times 10 to the 23 that's not quite my final answer though 
because I've been asked how many chloride ions. So actually, I need to multiply this by two because one magnesium chloride contains two chloride ions. Bit of a sneaky question, this one. So I now need to times my answer by two. Gives me a final value of 1.8 nine six and that's just again times 10 to the 23 1 1.896 times 10 to the 23 and that's just a value because i've been asked for a number of chloride ions so common errors that people make here are as i've said at the bottom there be careful that magnesium chloride getting the correct formula and then remembering to times it by two because we'll ask for chloride ions not magnesium or magnesium chlorides and the other mistake people tend to make is they're just not that comfortable using a calculator and how we put those large numbers because the numbers are often very large so it's how we use that how we manage that so that brings this lesson to a close then um, remember any further questions you've got or any further videos you think would support you please let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Good luck.